students, this is the circle problem video for the Unit 2 study guide. Let's take a look here. It says, review, hug and distribute, collect like terms, solve, plug in your value for the variable to check. So we're going to do 2 here, or get started on it anyway. For this kind of problem, you want to start with Circle that 5 and distribute. Circle that 5 and distribute. Okay, next line. We have three, 5 times 3, that's 15m. 5 times negative 1 is minus 5. 5 times 4m is 20m. 5 times positive 4 is 20. Notice, I'm talking myself through the math. Many of you will find it helpful if you talk your math out loud. Our goal is to get our m's on one side and our numbers on the other. Let's do one step at a time. So I'm going to minus 15m, minus 15m. And the next row is negative 5 equals, that's 20 minus 15, that's 5m plus 20. Now we're going to, that's positive 20 minus 20 both sides. Negative 5 minus 20 is negative 25 equals 5m. You divide by 5. Now you're going to finish this up and you're going to find the value of m. But you're not going to stop there. Whatever you get for m, I want you to take the extra time and in the margin, plug m back in. You should get a habit of doing that. Then way you can know absolutely for sure whether or not your answer is correct. So never be happy with just an answer when it comes to algebra problems. Always go back, plug it in, and see if you did it correctly. Next one was problem 8. So it says, Sweep the given angles in three different colors. Label the diagram with the given information. Find everything possible. Show all work. Very important. You do this in different colors. It really makes these problems pop out. So taking a look at 8. Okay. We have the measure of angle GVU, so you start at G, go to V, go to U, trace in, sweep, that's 72. Measure angle WVU equals 11X minus 2. So that one's red, this one's going to be blue, so G, V, excuse me, WVU, so W, VU trace and sweep. That is 11x minus 2. Last one is WVG. WVG trace and sweep. That's going to be 3x plus 22. Really, really, really important. You do not immediately look at the algebra. So your eyeballs are not here right now. That's not what you're looking at. Instead, I want you to focus on the fact that there's no bisector. So we're going to have something plus something equals a whole. But the next thing is I want you to think in terms of the colors and the angles. And what we notice is that this small green angle plus this smaller red angle equals the larger blue angle added up. So this is called a thing equation. 
You think in terms of the relationship of things before the algebra. Now, circle plug chug. Green, green equation, 3x plus 22 plus red, red equation, 72 equals blue, blue, 11x minus 2. Your goal is, of course, to solve for x, but you are not done. The instructions, well, this says find wvu, but my instructions up here tells you to find everything possible. So once you find x, you take that value of x, you obviously plug it in where an x is, and you find every possible angle there. Always get in the habit of finding everything. Next one's 15. So it says right here to sweep angle A and sweep angle B, write out their relationship using all the descriptors that apply. So the descriptors could be complementary, supplementary, vertical, adjacent, alternate in, alternate X, corresponding, or same side interior. Taking, so there could be multiple descriptors there. Taking a look at 15, we sweep B. We sweep A. If you look really carefully, technically that's a squat looking Z. So these are alternate interior. Alternate interior angles. They're between the lines on opposite sides. Okay, number 20 was next. We're supposed to multiply and simplify. Many of you are still having a real hard time on radicals. So if you need more practice, you can go to that diagnostic link. Okay, step one. I want you to take this and circle or highlight it. And I want you to draw your distributive arrows. There's one. There's two. I'm going to color code this so you can see what's going on. So the first one's going to be negative 4 root 15 times 5. The next one, the blue, negative times a negative is a positive. So it's positive 4 root 15 times root 6. We multiply outies. Negative 4 times 5, that's negative 20. You look for an any there, there's no any there, so we just leave it at root 15. Plus, we multiply outies, there's technically a 1 there, so that stays 4. Root, and here you have 6 times 15, which is 90. You're not done. Because if you can simplify, you should. So let's check 15. That's 3 and 5. There's no dates. So your final answer here is negative 20 square root of 15 plus this is 2 and 45. That's 9 times 5, 3 and 3. We have a date here, a pair of threes. They're going to come out, one, three, and multiply. So this is four times three, which is 12, square root 
2 and 5, so it's 10. That was problem 20. Next one we're looking for is problem 32. It says, Sweep the given angles. Determine if the relationship is congruent or supplementary. Set up an equation to solve for x. Then find all possible angle measures in the diagram show all work. We're doing number 32 together. So you start by physically sweeping the angles. I can't emphasize how important that is. Because by doing that, that helps brain, register in your brain what kind of angles it is. So we sweep and we sweep. Our choices are this. Oh, I'm actually just going to write them all out for you in the margin. Our choice is alt in. Alt x. Corresponding, and our last choice would be same side interior or consecutive interior. When lines are parallel, which they are, these three are going to be congruent, and this one adds up to 180. So your job is to take a look at this and determine which one of them is it. And you should note that that is same side interior. It's on the same side of the stir stick. Here's your stir stick between the lines. So we write out. They're not congruent. It's angle plus angle equals 180. Now you circle plug chug. Angle 15x minus 5 plus this angle, which is 12x minus 4 equals 180. You solve for x. Collect like terms. That's negative 5 minus 4, that's minus 9 equals 180. Seventeen X equals one eighty nine. I know seven times seven. I should have said this out loud. Fifteen X plus twelve X is not seventeen, it's twenty seven. So I have twenty seven X equals 189. So let's check. We're going to do 27 times 7 and see if that works. That's going to be 7 times 7 is 9. Carry the 4. 7 times 2 is 140 plus 4. That's 189. So I know if I divide, I'm going to end up with x equals 7. Don't get all happy because you solve for x. This is geometry class not algebra. So I go up here, I know x is 7. So these two angles is going to be 15 times 7 minus 5. And this is going to be 12 times 7 minus 4. 15 times 7 
That's 105 minus 5. That makes 100. And then 12 times 7. It's 84 minus 4, of course, that's 80. That's one way I can check, because these two are supposed to add up to 180. But wait, there's more. I don't tell you just to solve for x and plug it and solve for those angles. Your job is to find all possible angles. So there's a couple ways you can start by doing this. We want to do armpits of the z. So that means this, of course, if that's 80, this is 80. I can go vertical angles here, 80. Armpits of the Z again, 80. You guys get the idea here. So you want to walk up that 100 and that 80, find every single possible in the diagram. The next one was 38. says we're going to find the distance between the points. Give your answer in simplified radical form. The most important part of this step is actually to make sure you get the correct coordinates. If you mess up on the coordinates, everything kind of goes downhill from there. So this one, I'm over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm over 1 and up 4. And this one down here, I'm over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm down one, two, three. Okay, next you want to write your template. That's your distance template. Now you want to circle plug check. So we're going to do our X's first. Doesn't matter which way you subtract. What does matter is consistently. See, so I'm going to go top bottom. And to make sure I'm consistent, I even draw arrows. One minus five, that's going to be negative four squared. Four minus negative three, that swaps, that's now positive squared. Seven. Don't forget your square root sign. You can finish it up from there until you end up with just a radical. If you can simplify, do so. If not, just leave it under the radical side. Looks like I skipped one. Here we are. Find the other end point of the line. Find the other end point given an end point and a midpoint. So here Here's an end point. Here's the midpoint. Here's another end point. So we are looking for the other end point, which we don't have. So we're given one end point here is negative 3, negative 2. The exact middle is going to be 7 and negative 5. And then our other end point we don't know. Ready? You are negative three years old. This is grandma. The exact middle between us is seven. So the question is, how old is grandma? So you find the units of distance between negative three and positive seven. And on a number line, between negative three and positive seven, There are 10 units. Notice I'm going from negative to positive, so I'm going to go 10 units up. So because that's a midpoint, whatever this coordinate is, it also must be 10 units up as well. So starting at 7, if I were to bunny hop 10 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you ask yourself, where would you be on the number line? And it's 17. 
I want you to do the process. You're negative two years old. This is grandpa Y. The exact middle between us is negative five. So follow the same process, units of distance. But you need to figure out whether you're going up or down. Find that other end point. If you want to know for sure you're correct, do a quick sketch of these. One end point is negative three, negative two. That's your end. And your midpoint is seven. Seven, negative five, so slightly more down. That's your midpoint. So your other end point, look here, is going to be somewhere along this continuum, somewhere way out here. So that's our mystery end point. So whatever your coordinates are, they should visually check with an actual diagram. Next one is 40. It says, find the slope of a line parallel to the given line. So see the word slope and parallel? First question you want to ask is, what do you know about parallel lines and slope? What's the connection? That's the most important thing for you to first think of. And when lines are parallel, by definition, their tilt must be exactly the same. Their physical tilt must be the same, or if they weren't the same, lines would not be parallel. They would eventually intersect, as in the case of these two blue lines. So for lines to be parallel, the slope of one must be exactly the same as the slope of the other. So right here, I have y equals mx plus b. Write it out. Now circle your m. Circle what your m is. So your given slope is going to be negative 4 over 3. We know slope equals slope for parallel lines. Therefore, your parallel slope, figure out what your parallel slope has to be according to this concept. Slope equals slope. And put it there. We want to talk about the slope of a line in perpendicular. So let's draw. There's one line. There's the other line. So right away, whenever you have perpendicular lines, you should immediately see one of the slopes is going to be positive, and the other slope is going to be negative. And for perpendicular lines, the relationship you learned about in the video is that slope times the other slope must equal negative 1. They're the opposite reciprocal. Right, y equals mx plus b. There's your m of your given line. So that's the first one. So we're doing this. 3 over 2 times something equals negative 1. That's your goal, is to figure out the something, showing all work. It says, write the slope-intercept form equation of a line by to the one described. So start by, let's write slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So here we are at 44. I want, I have a given line, 
That's the yellow right here. My given line is y equals negative 3 over 5x minus 2. This is my given line. Then we have what's called the described line. And that described line has two qualities. One, it goes through this point, 5, negative 4, and it's parallel to that line. Now, parallel means something's going on with the slope. So first you want to find the parallel slope. And we know slope equals slope. So the described line is going to have a slope of negative 3 over 5. So notice we have a point. We have an xy point, and we have a slope. We have a point, and we have a slope. I'm going to say it again. We have a point, and we have a slope. So we can use the point-slope equation of a line, which is this, y minus y1 equals slope x minus x1. I'm going to pause and let you write that down. Now, very carefully, we're going to circle plug chug. This is y1. Our y1 here is that. So I'm going to bring it down. That's negative 4. Our x1 circle is that, it's 5. And our slope is a parallel slope, so it's negative 3 over 5. Let's bring down the equation around it. This is y minus y1. So this is going to change that side. Double negative makes a positive, so I'm going to connect those and make that positive 4. Equals negative 3 over 5 x minus 5. Our goal is to get y all by itself. That's our goal. So we are going to, we can distribute. So I end up with y plus 4 equals negative 3 over 5x. Now let's do this in the margin so you can see it. 3 over 5 times negative 5. These 5 cancel to a 1. A negative times a negative is going to make positive. So this ends up being positive 3. We're going to minus 4 both sides y equals negative 3 fifths x minus 1. Now what's really nice about this is you can do a quick sketch and you can see if you're correct. So we're going to do a quick sketch here. Draw yourself a very simple graph. I'm going to graph this up here. That's our first graph. That's going to be y equals negative 3 fifths x minus 3. So I go down 1, 2, 3. Then I'm going to rise 3, 1, 2, 3, and go over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my original line. That's my given line. Now my described line is this one. And it starts at negative 1. And we're going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3, over 5. 
one, two, three, four, five, or I can go up three, one, two, three, and go over five, one, two, three, four, five, either way. And then I draw that. Okay, now there's two describers. One, they're supposed to be parallel, which they are. Two, we're supposed to be able to go through the point positive five, negative four. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then we go down four. One, two, three, boom. There we go. We, we hit our descriptor. When you get a finished product here, take a, do a little quick sketch and you'll know if you're correct or not. Let's try that again. This time, we have a given line, and our given line is negative 5x minus 2. And then we have a described line. And our described line, so there's our given line, our described line is we want it to go through this point, negative 5, positive 3, but be perpendicular to that line. So let's write out our perpendicular slope. That's going to be slope times slope equals negative 1. Our given slope is negative 5 times something equals negative 1. You have to ask yourself what that something is. Try to fill that one in by yourself. We can't put a negative in there, it has to be positive, so it's going to be negative, it's going to be positive 1 over 5. That way the 5's cancel and make a 1. So our described line slope is going to be positive 1 over 5. I have a point, this is x, this is y, and I have a slope. So now I'm going to use the point-slope equation of a line. You should have this memorized. Now, circle plug chug. Our y1 is 3. Our x1 is negative 5. And our slope is positive 1 over 5. Bring down your equation around it. That's y minus. That's an equal sign. Parentheses. That is, oops, I got that 5 in the wrong place. Hang on. This is x minus negative 5, so this goes here. And x1, not the x, so that's going to be plus 5. Our goal is to get y by itself. I'm going to start by distributing. And let's do this in the margin. It's going to be 1 over 5 times 5. You should see the 5's cancel, and I'm going to end up with positive 1 here. And I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I end up with y equals 1 fifth x plus 4. That is my described line. This here, the yellow, that is my given line. So to finish it, we're going to take a moment and we're going to do a quick sketch of both lines. So I'm going to do a quick sketch of y equals negative 5x minus 2. That's minus 2. Now I'm going to count out the slope which is technically negative 5 over 1. So I'm going to go like this. Down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1, or you can go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1. You should get the same thing. So this is your given line.
Now our described line is positive 4 and then 1 over 4. So I go up here, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. There's positive 4. And I'm going to count up 1 and over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Something's wrong here. Whoops, that's negative. So we're going to go this way. That way 1, this way 1. This is a negative line. So this is y equals negative 5 over 1, x minus 2. This one, we go up 1 over 5 this way, or we can go down 1 over 5 this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there, since you've done this now, look, they're perpendicular, which is good. That was our first prerogative, is they had to be perpendicular. There's the given. Here's the described. And we had to go through this lovely point here. Negative 5, 3. Let's see if we managed to nail that. Negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then up 3. 1, 2, 3. Boom, we got it. 